my steam engine playroom and now as promised a small amount of sorcery and witchcraft I've been alive now quite a long time and these days not a lot surprises me but last week I went to see my friend Andrew in his workshop Andrew has a YouTube channel called Model Engineering Adventures which is well worth a look at this stage you could be forgiven for thinking well this is a boring video as there is nothing on screen except this spring but this is no ordinary spring it's made of a special material called nitinol n-i-t-i-n-o-l what is nitinol and what does it stand for it's an alloy of nickel and titanium which was developed at the united states naval ordnance laboratory as far as i'm aware around 1959 why have i never heard of this stuff the pronunciation of the word nitinol is optional I'm using the American version of the pronunciation. One or two people pronounce it nitinol, because if you think about it, it is nickel and titanium. The word nickel is generally not pronounced nickel, but in the periodic table of the elements, nickel is known as ni. But then again, in the film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, it is the knights that say ni, so the jury's out on this one. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to pronounce it nitinol. This is a nitinol spring. You can buy it in wire form as well. And it's not a very strong spring. And if I do this with it, it completely ruins it. So there you have it. That's uh, nitinol. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. There is a lot more to this special alloy than meets the eye. Once I drop this badly deformed spring into a bowl of hot water and it's just under boiling point, it pardon the pun springs back into shape well almost because i ruined this by heating it too much and apparently if you heat this stuff to around 500 degrees c in any shape that you make it into it will remain there and that's what it will jump back to once you put it in hot water and that's why my particular nitinol spring doesn't look very good because i abused it although as you can see i can push it back into the position but what I would need to do is heat it to a very high temperature to make it memorise the position. When I first saw this in Andrew's workshop, I couldn't believe it. I thought to myself, I've never seen anything like that before. This is at 100% normal speed, and you can see how quickly the spring returns to its original shape. It doesn't matter how you bend the spring, it always returns to its original shape. And this is in slow motion. The interesting thing though is when it's returning to its original shape it does exert a lot of force. If you stretch the spring out it's easy, there's not much pressure, but when it's returning back to its shape it has a lot of pull. Rather than use a bowl of hot water I'm going to use an electrical method. First I want to check the resistance of the spring itself. I really must get a new battery for this meter, I cannot zero the ohms. For this though it doesn't really matter, it's not that accurate. When I short the two probes together I get the same reading as when I put the spring in between the two probes. Time now to connect my variable DC power supply. I'll start it at about 5 volts. Here you can see what I mean about the power when it's pulling back together. I'm really having to hang on to this probe. This video is not a very scientific look at this night in all stuff. If you want to know more, type the word nitinol into YouTube. There is a wealth of information about nitinol. When my friend Andrew and I were playing with this stuff in his workshop, we made the spring turn back into its original shape using a simple 9 volt battery. I don't know what the current is with this 5 volt supply, but it's too much. As you can see, the probes are sparking and the spring is smoking. So just to recap, this stuff is called nitinol. You can get it in wire and spring format. Check it out, buy some and have a play. See if you can figure out how to make an engine out of it. But I do recommend watching YouTube videos first. In the previous video, I used some props on the bench. A skull, a mortar and pestle and a small cauldron. And also this aluminium apple. This was given to me by a friend quite a while back. It was sent to him as a sample of the engineering quality of a Chinese company. 
It's a very small thing and it's beautifully made and it slides together and pulls apart with ease. As you can see very clearly in this image, these are properly machined, extremely small dovetail joints. To be honest, when he first gave it to me, I didn't really know what it was until I noticed the dovetails, which are more marked now because they've got some dirt in the gaps. Whatever I may think about some of the products that I see out on the market, I think this is rather wonderful. In this clip, if you look very carefully at the part in my left hand, you will see some particles in the centre. That's because my friend used a tumbler to polish the thing up, and some of the polishing media remained in the centre. It's never a good idea to use these tumbler polishers if there are lots of holes in parts, because it gets everywhere and will block up the holes. There's not a lot more I can say. I'm no expert on it. I just wanted to introduce my viewers to this wonderful stuff called nitinol. In this clip, the water wasn't hot enough to return the distorted spring back to its original shape. That's it for this episode. I'm going to leave the video with the name of this stuff, nitinol, and what nitinol stands for. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.